There's this quote by Howard Gardner. You learn at your best when you have something you care about and can get pleasure in being engaged in. This is basically the principle for anyone engaged in a self-learning routine. Having a lack of interest in certain topics may be less deterrent for you if you're studying in some kind of institution. Despite the lack of engagement in your classes, you end up studying because you need to pass in order to get your diploma. When you're self-studying, maybe there isn't any kind of diploma or grade waiting for you at the end of the line, especially if you're studying for entertainment purposes and not because you're going to self-apply for some kind of exam or test. So, first of all, if you want to learn something on your own, you need to find a purpose or enjoyment in the process. Without these, you'll fail sooner or later. And before we start, let's talk about the advantages of this so-called self-directed learning. Why is it so effective and why should you do it? Well, all in all, self-directed learning helps you tremendously because it's the ultimate active learning experience. You encode information and retain it better because nothing is being handed out to you. Self-directed learning is very special because each step of the learning process is yours to decide, your progress is yours to evaluate, and the methods and the time management you employ are yours to choose. Although overwhelming, this freedom can be immensely positive. You are allowed to delve into subjects at a much deeper level instead of only looking at the tip of the iceberg, as happens in most college-level studies. However, self-learning is very challenging. Most researchers have stated that self-directed learning is something that needs to be taught on its own, and it requires a specific set of skills that allow the learner to actively engage in the required activities without external stimuli. However, although it may not be something natural for everyone, it's definitely achievable through the right means. So here are some ways you can strive to become a master self-directed learner. Number one, establish your purpose. This is part of the purpose slash enjoyment duo that I mentioned earlier. Are you learning to apply for an exam but can't afford a prepping program? Are you learning because you enjoy engaging in the activity of learning, be it playing an instrument, engaging in a specific skill, or simply studying from textbooks and taking notes? You really need to identify the purpose of your self-learning before you start thinking about anything else. Establish smaller goals. If you followed step number one, then you already know why you're getting yourself into this mess. But now it's time to be practical and really understand where you actually want to go with, with this journey. Maybe you want to know X topic by a certain date. Maybe you want to be able to strike a conversation in a different language when you go traveling next summer. Or maybe you want to learn to eventually be able to play the opening song to that show that you really like, but it's really hard to memorize and play. Either way, there will be a smaller goal there, and it should have a date, so write it down in your calendar. Now you should establish even smaller goals, and nope, I'm not even joking. Now that your end goal is written down in your calendar, and now that your self-learning purpose is clear, it's time to break down your goals into smaller goals. For instance, if you want to learn how to speak Japanese in one year, there will be a lot of mini skills to tackle. If you want to also be able to read it, then you should learn and memorize hiragana, learn basic vocabulary, learn basic sentence structuring, memorize a few travel-friendly questions and remarks, and so on. These are your even smaller goals. Write down a list, then mark in your calendar when you would like to achieve these even smaller goals. Tip number four is finding an accountability or monitoring system. In college, your accountability system is a mixture of being, well, formally graded, having your professors potentially look at you with disappointment, and being the laughing stock of your classmates if you end up with a poor grade. Even if most of what I said doesn't really apply and doesn't happen in that dramatic way, we really end up imagining ridiculous situations in our heads, and sometimes we act just because we fear external repercussions. Well, in self-learning, there will be no accountability system if you don't actually build one yourself. My tips are telling a friend or a family member your self-learning and communicating your goals. 
and two, building a database that allows you to periodically check in with yourself and mark whether your even smaller goals have actually been reached. This will turn you into a self-learning, self-monitoring system because no one likes to break a streak or leave those check marks blank for too long. Next, you should learn more about learning. This may sound too meta, but it's what you're doing right now. The thing is, this video is about generalized ideas on self-learning, but there will be tons of resources around the internet telling you how to self-learn your topic specifically. Language learning is a major example of this, but you can also find these threads everywhere on the internet for other skills and subjects. This will help you find the best resources for your specific topic, give you hints on where to start, as well as timings and an idea of your expected progress. Consistency is key, and so is your calendar. Self-learning is difficult because you need to build your own schedule and be consistent. This is why your calendar will be your best friend from now on. Having a list of small goals to tackle is pointless if you aren't making space in your life to go through with those mini challenges. That's why it's fundamental to be consistent with your learning progress. And being consistent means scheduling your learning or practicing sessions in your calendar at a time that is reasonable and will allow you to exploit the max capacity of your brain. Daily, weekly or monthly schedules, that's up to you. What is important is that you're scheduling consistently and keeping up with your schedule by marking your successful learning sessions in that self-monitoring system we talked about earlier. Also, don't forget to find help and share. A big part of college and other academic experiences is the social interaction you have with your colleagues or research fellows. In self-learning, this is more difficult to achieve, but by searching a bit around, you can find platforms and communities created and managed by people learning the exact same things you're learning right now. Send out emails or messages with your questions and try to be more engaged. This will help you open up new ways, discover new subtopics, and find tips and tricks to speed up your progress. Start building your database. I know that for the last couple of months I haven't shut up about building a knowledge database, but it's really, really important and even more important for self-learners. This is the place where you'll write everything you know about your subject of interest, link interesting resources, track your progress and write your goals. You can be as simplistic or as maximalist as you want with this process. You can use an analog method or a digital system, well, you name it. If you need some guidance, I've made a video about the second brain method and last week I talked about the Zettelkasten system, which are both different ways to build a knowledge database. So if you're interested, I'll link both videos down below. Don't forget the basics, but don't hesitate to go long term. Even if you're feeling quite comfortable with the basics of the skill you've chosen to learn, go back and review them, even if it's just for a couple of days. It's important to make sure that whatever the foundations of your area of knowledge are, they're set in stone and you can start pursuing your self-directed learning journey without anything holding you back. At the same time, be ambitious and don't hesitate to go long term. This means that you should definitely look forward to more difficult parts in the process, harder topics to tackle, a broad subject that connects to the skill you're learning but you feel very uncomfortable diving into. Either way, it's recommended that by keeping your eye on the prize, you recognize the harder parts of the journey, so you're ready to tackle them as soon as they appear. Finally, be skeptical. Being skeptical is ridiculously important if you're self-learning, because the information you come across may not be verified. You need to be able to challenge the data you find, especially if you're not taking your information from recognized sources. A good way to do this is submitting your findings to the network or community of self-learners I recommended before, or trying to find more about the author who wrote it down. This also creates a major incentive for you to try and find conflicting ideas, which is great for active learning because it forces you to transform what you're reading into ideas of your own through critical thinking. If you love to learn as much as I do, and if you want to incorporate learning into your routine more often, it's a great idea to mix learning into entertainment. And the easiest and most effective way to do this is learning by watching. But if you're tired of watching ads on your favorite YouTube's educational and productivity videos, then you can sign up for Nebula, 
which is an ad-free streaming video platform built by and for independent creators like me, Thomas Frank, Ali Abdal, Minute Physics, Real Engineering, Tier Zoo, and so on. We also experiment with new formats and series, and without worrying about YouTube's algorithm, the best educational content is being created over there. The great thing is that we've teamed up with CuriosityStream, so that with your subscription, you get a free Nebula account. CuriosityStream is a streaming service with thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles, which also has its own deal for a limited time on their annual plan, with a 26% discount. So if you want to learn more about coffee, red pandas and rainbows, among many other things, the price is just $14.79 for a whole year. This is a great way to support educational creators as a whole, as well as this channel. If you're interested in joining, all you have to do is click the link in the description box below to get this exclusive offer. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!